Presumably we're live. I'm hoping we're live. Um, how's my framing? Not too bad. Anyway, good morning everyone. I'm going to see if I can get this up on this computer as well so that I'm not peering into the distance of the camera to, to see what you guys are saying. So bear with just a second. Just check I've got the sound off. Well, I can see myself, so that bodes well. Hi, Lily. Okay, and then I'm going to try and share this to social media as well. So, truly interactive. Um, here we go. This is going to be a really boring first couple of minutes while I try and figure out the technology. Um, I think it's only my second YouTube live stream on this channel. So, uh, yeah, it could all go horribly wrong, but we're going to be really positive about everything. Um, let's have a look. Okay, that is the text that we need. And I'm going to pop it with the link. Might need to edit this bit off the beginning. Okay, there we go. So then that needs to go on to Facebook. It needs to go on to Twitter. Oh, it's too long for Twitter. Of course it is. see people are here. Say hello if you're here. Um, right, what else do I need to do? Um, Facebook page, create post, not now, out. That would do. Okay, anyway, hi everyone, happy Sunday. So to change things up um, this week, I thought we would do something a little bit different. So obviously normally on a Sunday is when my pre-recorded video goes up um, and then we just have a bit of a live chat alongside it. But uh, the video I was planning on doing this week was a, um, uh, well, it was showing you how to make a model that I've been working on, but the model is not finished. So of course the video is not finished. So rather than leave you uh, without a video this week, I received this in the mail this week, which is the brand new Lego set from, I just realized I'm logged in on YouTube on my computer to a different account, so let's switch. That's what we want, okay. Um, yeah, sorry, which is the brand new Everyone is Awesome Lego set celebrating Pride and it's by a chap called Matthew Ashton who is one of the developers over at Lego and he followed me on Twitter yesterday so I'm really scared he's going to turn up and watch me do this. Um, but yes, if you haven't seen it, this is what it looks like. Um, and what I love about it in particular is it doesn't just feature the traditional rainbow flag, it features all of the colours of the progress flag, which you will have seen if you watched last week's video, um, because I've referenced it, and it's also on my um, profile picture on my various social media as well. And what I love about the progress flag is it also includes the colours black and brown to represent people of colour, and it includes the pink, white and blue of the trans pride flag as well. So absolutely love it. I haven't built a Lego set for, I can't even remember actually the last time I built a Lego set, definitely not since I was a child. So this is going to be a new experience for me, um, but we'll see how I get on. There are 346 pieces to this, so it could take hours, but I'm hoping that because it's quite a simple design, actually it's very repetitive, 
And that's why I thought we would do a bit of a cake decorating Q&A at the same time, so that you're not just literally sitting me watching doing Lego. So this is your chance to ask me kind of any questions you might have, any um, baking conundrums, maybe any issues you're having. Let's see if we can solve them together. Um, and while we're doing that, I will make this. Gosh, I've just realised how much of my background you can see. You can even see the pile of junk in the corner. Apologies about that. Anyway, I'm going to put that there so people logging in can see what we're doing. Um, and we have got one, two, three, four, five, six packs of Lego, plus these pieces, and then of course the all important booklet. So I'm going to get this open. Um, morning Claire, we're actually live for once Claire, so I can answer your questions here on the screen. So I am well, Bobbit is also very well, he's out washing the cars at the moment. Um, and Treacle I'm sure as well as well, she's probably in the garden sunning herself, she does love the sunshine. Okay, here we go. Oh, there's a picture of the man himself, so that is Matthew Ashton, the chap I talked about earlier on. And he says... I wanted to create a model that is a symbol of inclusivity that celebrates everyone, no matter how they identify or who they love. Everyone is unique and with a little more love, acceptance and understanding in the world, we can all feel free to be our true awesome selves. This model is to show that we care and that we truly believe everyone is awesome. We hope that you'll build this model and display it with pride. It's a celebration of love, a celebration of you. Love that. Okay, so. Let's see what we've got in here. So, first of all, we have some pieces. It doesn't stay flat. Okay, step one, I need one of these. Step two, I need this, and I have to connect them like so. Anyone logging in who doesn't know what this is about is going to be so confused that they're logging in to a cake decorating channel and watching me build Lego, but there we go. Um, oh, Vicky's here, good morning, Vicky. Morning, Keys. Um, okay, so that was step one. Step two is, oh, I need these next. I assume it's this one. Um, look at me not actually taking the time to check. And then this goes on here, and this goes on here. There you go, we've done the first double page already. Okay. Look at this, we're racing through. How long do you think it will be till I realise I've made a mistake? Okay, then what do I need to do? Um, so I've attached that piece, then I need another long one, I need another medium one, and then I need, those are six long. Where are they? you think that you would just like open one bag at a time. That's why I would do it. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, I need one, two, three of those, and then it looks like I put this on here, like so, and then I put one of these here, one of them here, one of them in the middle here, and then this one here. Okay. Anyway, what are we talking about? So, oh, we've got some messages redact retracted. Um, um, okay, I think we're having a conversation about sugar paste, but the first messages have been deleted, so I can't actually see what they say. Um, Vicky, you seem to have that in hand, so I'm gonna carry on. Let me know if I can help. Okay, now we want small, to, they've probably all got proper names. Any Lego experts in the house who have got knowledge of what different Lego pieces are called, feel free to jump in. Okay, so we need, oh, there's a Lego person. I might just pop those together and put them out of the way. 
bits of Lego people at the side. Okay, there's definitely no rhyme or reason to what's in what bag. Definitely not. Um, this looks promising. Okay, so first up, it says that I need. Okay, this pink. Sorry, I'm very easily distracted. Um, these ones, so the ones that have just got two knobbly bits on the top, and I need a black one, and it's going over there. A black one, brown one, a red one, but there's no red ones in here. Oh, there's red ones in here. Red one, orange one, yellow one, green. Green are in this bag. Definitely strange. Okay. Imagine if I lost a bit, that would be terrible. Oh, like that. There we go. Okay. Green. Blue, dark blue, purple, or in that bag. Okay, this is it. This is all the bags open. This is where it's going to get hairy. Okay, so it seems we're talking about sugar paste ripping around the top of a cake. Okay, so... I find if you're using the softer Renshaw, so the original ready to roll, a lot of the time it can be that either you haven't kneaded it enough, so it hasn't got enough stretch to it, or it can be because you have um, allowed too much um, icing sugar or corn flour to mix in with it, which has changed the consistency. The original Renshaw is a very soft paste, so it does, it requires a bit more finesse to it, it's, it's, it is definitely trickier to use. I think the thing is, um, if you've got into cake decorating over the last maybe five to 10 years, um, there are a lot more kind of premium sugar paste that are a lot, that are a lot more forgiving and a lot more easy to use. Um, but actually the traditional sugar paste, the original sugar pastes um, are, are a lot softer. And in fact, if you make your own sugar paste, it's very soft as well. And the thing is, to use paste like that, it was all about speed. It was about kneading it, getting it nice and soft and pliable, getting your cake prepared, and then literally getting it on, smoothing the top, and attaching those top corners as quickly as you can. The thing is, if people are used to using kind of the stretchier, more premium sugar paste, you don't ever develop those skills, if that makes sense. I hope this doesn't sound shady. I don't mean it to at all. It is just, a different way of working. If you're using a softer sugar paste, whether that's homemade, supermarket, um, or just kind of the, the more long-standing original brands that have been around for longer, you do, as I say, just need to roll it out, um, usually to about um, five millimeters thick. I usually go somewhere between three and five, but if you're struggling, I would go slightly thicker, so the five, and then lift it up with your rolling pin over the top of the cake, smooth that top as quickly as you can, and then smooth that top kind of about an inch of the paste around the cake. And what that will do is it will make sure it's nice and stuck and it's not gonna tear over the edge. If you spend too long on that top, that edge will fall. Um, and again, so it's things like not putting it on your turntable, but covering on the tabletop, but it is really about working quickly. I wonder perhaps I can do a video in a few weeks time where we go through how to cover a cake with the softer sugar paste, just because as I say, it is, there's, there's definitely just a different skill to it. Okay, keep the questions coming though. I'm gonna try and multitask, which obviously is going to go incredibly well. Okay, I'm looking for one of these tiny little black ones. And the same in pink, which is there. Um, yeah, I agree with what Vicky's saying right there. Oh, and then we need two of these. I don't know if there's a skill to this, by the way. I have seen that people do like Lego builds as 
their type of content. So obviously this is my first time building a Lego set, so I have no idea of terminology or what you need to see. In fact, you can't even see what I'm doing, can you? It's out of shot. Apologies. Let me finish this bit and I'll rejig. Uh, red. Red. Orange. Yellow. Green. Dark blue. Purple. Light blue, white, pink. Okay, this is what we're up to. Okay, Vicky's doing a fabulous job of answering your questions. Perhaps I should just get on with the Lego and let Vicky do it. Vicky, you are hired. For anyone who doesn't know, Vicky is Vicky of Yellow Bee Cake Company, who I did a collaboration video with a few weeks ago. Um, we made, um, I can't quite reach it, I'll get it in a bit, but we made a leprechaun cupcake topper for St. Patrick's Day. Um, and it was a really good video because she took us through kind of all the steps of modeling, um, dusting and all those sorts of things. So really, really good, worth checking out. Um, and if you're here because you are enjoying pride theme content, last week we made um, rainbow sugar cookies that look like this. Um, Again, if you fancy having a go at those, the video is up on my channel right now. Okay. White and pink. Whoops. So this is where we are now. I'm going to swipe these slightly back, so hopefully you can see if I do it here. Um, okay. And then... We are going in with these flat pieces and it looks like we are just putting a row of them out to the edge. Um, they're all in this pack. Oh, I might, as I come across them, move the various bits of figures just so I don't lose them. Okay, black. Black. Oh gosh, some tiny pieces. One of those, one of those, and one of those. So that's what we've got now. Just added in this black strip here with the two piece for the figure to stand on later. And we're going to do exactly the same thing, but with brown. So one, In fact, I might put the little one on now, so I put it in the right place. That goes there. Brown. Brown. Somebody, it might even have been Vicky actually, said on Instagram that I should make a cake version of this. But if I do, I think it will have to be a lot bigger than the real thing, because it's, it's very small. Um, okay, so that's the brown. Gosh, we're racing through. And then we're carrying on with that. So then it's red. In fact, again, I'm going to put the, the piece it stands on, on first so I get them all in the right place. Orange, orange. Yellow. What's everyone up to today besides this, besides watching along? Anyone got exciting plans? Anyone going anywhere? After I finish this, I've got schoolwork to do. So Sundays tend to be YouTube video, schoolwork. Um, and that's about it really, quite quiet. Um, white, white. Okay, so I've cheated a little bit and just popped in the mounts for the pieces to stand on, on here. So Vicky has got to do a voiceover on a video for her subscribers and make a TikTok video, as have you. Uh, I've already done mine, Vicky. It's saved in my drafts because I was up ridiculously early today. So on a Sunday before my YouTube video goes live, I 
a Zoom call with some of my friends and we watch Drag Race together. So my friend Kelly, who lives in Canada, stays up ridiculously late. My friends Timo and Patrick, who live in Germany, get to get up pretty much at normal time. And then I get up super early and we all jump on a Zoom call and watch Drag Race um, together. Um, it's something we started doing kind of at the height of the pandemic and we've just kept doing it. Um, so that's, that's really fun. And so we did that this morning. We had two episodes this morning because um, we, we didn't manage to get together last week. So um, because I was up so early for that, I also had time to create my next TikTok. You want to find me on TikTok? I am Mr. Baker's Cakes. Um, and I've just taught myself how to edit my YouTube videos down into TikTok sized versions. So yes, I'm, I've got another one of those going up today. Um, Oh, Kelly's here. So my Canadian friend Kelly, who I was watching Drag Race with, is now here. I don't know why she's here, Kelly, because it is 20 past three in the morning in Canada and she should really be in bed. But it's still lovely to have her here. Uh, yellow. Do we have any Lego fans in the house? Anyone who's really into Lego? Shout out if you are. You can tell me what I'm doing wrong. Um, what else are people saying? Oh, it's Keith's birthday. Happy birthday, Keith. And I think I saw that Claire had her second vaccine yesterday, which is excellent news. I had mine on Friday, my second one, um, which was one of the reasons why this week's video was delayed because I was a little bit achy yesterday. No mega side effects again, just like last time. I just, um, as I say, gave me a bit of an achy arm. Um, I can live with that. I'm just moving the rest of the figures over here just so I've got them all in one place before anything rolls away. Has anyone else picked up this set in particular? I saw a few people comment on Facebook that they had one of these. Um, I used to be Rob, I had so much. Oh, Lego, sorry, took me a while there. See, when I was a kid, I was off the kind of, we had Lego, but we just had a massive box of Lego that we didn't have any sets at all, or at least not within my living memory. Um, I know my brother had Technic, Lego Technic, or, um, which was the one that had motors and stuff, and those were sets. But my kind of, my childhood experience of Lego was literally just taking random pieces out of a box and making whatever my imagination um, could come up with. So very different. I know um, I've got a friend who does collect Lego sets and builds them all and then has them all on display. Um, but yes, um, I have Lego at school as well, but again, it is very much just random box of tons and tons of pieces. Uh, one of those. Um, I saw somebody who had built this on, I think it was on Twitter yesterday, and they had, um, they'd actually built more than one and they managed to stack them up, which was quite cool. Um, Joseph says that he used to ask for it and then make his mum build it for him. That's amazing. I can tell you now that that would not have happened in my house at all. My mum would have just laughed in my face. But if your mum's going to do it, to be fair, your mum probably really enjoyed doing it. I'm enjoying doing it as a grown-up. So I can't see why mum wouldn't. Um, see, if I could really plan this out, I could have done it like I do my Kenwood Kids Club live videos, where we have like a, an angle on me and then an angle on, on the Lego. Poor planning. I'm clearly going to have to do another Lego build at some point in the future so that I can do it again. I'm not missing anything. Okay, rocks are purple on this baseboard, which you can kind of see here. Purple, purple, purple. I have to say, I have actually stumbled across people doing Lego on 
YouTube before, because I, I go down the YouTube rabbit hole um, and end up watching all sorts of strange content. Um, and some of the more complex sets, you know, like Hogwarts Castle and things like that, they just seem absolutely incredible. The patience people must have. And you must have to follow the, um, the booklet like a hawk. Kelly, go to bed. <laughs> Kelly is voting for a Lego Harry Potter build. I shouldn't have mentioned it, should I? Um, Claire, I had the AstraZeneca or the Oxford. Um, so I had my first one back in March and then my second one yes, uh, Friday, as I said. Um, it was very different experiences having them, actually. The first time um, was when, they, obviously I'm a primary school teacher and my local authority released them to primary school teachers. But I actually got mine because I've been um, pro providing like care support for my mum because she was really poorly last year. There's a blog about it on my, um, on my website if anyone's interested. But um, that's why I was offered it earlier than people in my age bracket. Um, but because they've released it to teachers that week anyway, there were so many people um, there. Um, I ended up waiting for hours and hours, whereas this time it was really quick. It was just in and out. Morning, Patrick. So that's Patrick, who I was also just watching Drag Race with. I won't ask you to tell me what happened because I don't want any spoilers. But hi guys. Okay, so we are up to, where are we up to? I'm on to page, or page 19, step 15 of 31. We're halfway there. Check us out. So this is what it looks like so far. We've got the baseboard all done with the, um, the little kind of the foot grips for all the characters. And now we're going to carry on working on this back wall, which looks like we do it exactly the same way we did the first one. So I'll do it facing you this time. Hopefully you can see that. I need to remember to keep changing colors. Um, those of you who are experienced um, Lego builders, is it normal for the bags to just be a mishmash of all the different um, pieces because I would have thought like steps maybe one to five all those pieces would be in the first bag and then you know steps five to ten or what have you but very much with this it was um yeah it was kind of just all over the place is that normal um yellow yellow orange red Brown, black, okay, then what? Ah, exactly the same as before. So we want that piece, and we want that piece, rude. And then we want two more of these. So those are our like internal structural support. And then we go down the front in exactly the same way again. So a two piece of pink, of white, baby blue, purple, dark blue, green, orange. I just had the best idea. So Vicky, as we all know, is a fantastic modeler and my kind of main thing that I like to do is sculpted cakes. So I'm thinking that if I do do this in cake, Vicky should have to make the characters, of which there are 11, and I make the cake part, and then we bring them together for the reveal. What do people think? And Patrick, my question was, is it normal that the kind of the pieces, although they were in like five or six separate bags, they weren't kind of organised in terms of the order you use them in. So, like, I had to open every single bag to do, like, steps one or two, which you'd think, as I say, if it was me, I would have thought, you know, steps one to five would be in one bag, and so on. So, yeah, that was just my question. Totally lost track of where I am. Um, one, two, ah, oh, okay, I know where we are. So next it's another row of these three, pe six pieces. 
just to move it there. It also comes with a Lego brick separator, by the way. That's new to me. They didn't exist when I was a kid. Um, oh gosh, what if I get really addicted to making Lego and end up having to buy loads of sets? They're really expensive. This one wasn't, by the way. This one was only 30, maybe 32 pounds. Um, but yeah, I was, I was quite surprised because I know when I've looked at Lego before in shops for like birthday presents, they're not cheap. But then maybe I was looking at that with without my my adult money head on. Okay, are we doing the same thing again? We are doing the same thing again. So then it's one of those, and one of those, and bread. A bit of a brain freeze then. That's another person piece. Person piece. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, other blue, white, pink, single pink. Single black. Surely it should get easier to spot them, not harder. Single black, there we go. Single black. And then, do we need these again? Well, yes, yes, we do. Internal structural pieces. And then exactly the same down the front again. Uh, baby blue. Purple. Dark blue. Green, yellow. I wonder if it'd be like an IKEA set where you end up with what a random piece left over. Um, red, brown, black. So Kelly is saying that she used to buy kits for her um, her boys all the time, and they were organised by the steps. Um, Patrick says that the bags not being numbered was strange. I'll get a chat. They have a QR code on them. I doubt you can see that, but that's all. Um, okay, so we're up to, that was step 21. Step 22. Step 22. Has anyone got any more baking or cake decoration questions, by the way? You know, just for, those people that regularly watch my content who might come across this video later, expecting the promised baking and cake decorating questions to be answered. I mean, don't worry if you haven't, I'm having fun. Um, Timo, they trusted you not to re need instructions. I have instructions and I'm following them very carefully. The last thing I want to do is get things wrong on a video live on the internet. For those of you who have joined later, I said that when I posted on social media yesterday that I was going to do this, the guy who created this Lego set, who works at Lego, I say works at Lego, he is the um, Vice President of Design at Lego, Matthew Ashton, followed me on Twitter. So I'm a little bit scared that he's gonna track this down and watch it later. So I need to make sure I do a good job. Um, let's have a look, purple, baby blue, white, pink, individual pink, individual black, structural piece, structural piece, these are the last of the structural pieces, so we must be getting near the top now. And then I'm just gonna pop them on as I find them. Black, baby blue, there's a brown, there's a red, yellow, green, dark blue, purple, white, and pink. Okay, um, 
is what's the best type of flour and chocolate to use? I have actually answered this question previously and when it comes to base ingredients like flour and chocolate, I tend to stick to supermarket own brands. Um, generally, not always, but generally I get really good results using supermarket own brands. Um, chocolate wise, I use Sainsbury's. Um, and as I say, their own brand chocolate, not like just one that they stock, literally Sainsbury's own chocolate, not the cheapest, not like the, the kind of the value um, chocolate that they sell, but kind of the normal box standard Sainsbury's label chocolate. And as I say, I've always had really good results with it. I think the chocolate ganache it makes is delicious. Um, it tempers really well. Um, so yeah, I'm not at all snobby when it comes to chocolate in the slightest. Um, flour wise, I tend to chop and change. So I was using Sainsbury's own brand um, self-raising flour, because I do most of my baking with self-raising flour because most of my baking is cake. And, oh, and for those of you who aren't in the UK, self-raising flour contains baking powder already, so you don't need to add your own raising agent. However, I found kind of, gosh, it must be, not necessarily this time last year, but maybe just under a year ago, I started having issues with my bakes over inflating and then collapsing. And I believe, I have no proof of this, and I could be wrong, so don't come for me saying sprays, but I think that the ratio of baking powder to flour was off in their mix, and so there was too much baking powder, and what was happening was it was making the cakes rise too much, and then of course they were collapsing because they couldn't support their rise. So after that, I switched to buying in bulk, which was fine during lockdown when I was doing loads and loads of baking, but I didn't get through it all and unfortunately had to waste some. So I then tried, I think it was Asda's um, own self-raising flour, and that touch wood has been fine so far. So currently using, um, Asda's self-raising flour and Sainsbury's chocolate. But I will say as well that um, sometimes brands will send me through samples of their flour and I've never had any issues with any of them. So if you ever see me using a particular Mills flour, you can assume that I was happy with it because I'd tell you if I wasn't. Um, in fact, I've just had a um, an invitation from Gosh, I can't remember who it was. One of the, the big flour mills, they're doing a kind of an open day where you can go in and, and tour their facilities and see the flour being made. And then they're going to do a bit of a chat about sustainability and what they're doing um, to be as environmentally friendly as possible. So I might go to that. I think that could be quite cool. Okay, then we're putting one of these curved pieces on this end in black and one on this end in pink. And then these pieces, these little flat topped beige coloured ones, are going in here, like so. And that one in there. I think we're on the home stretch, you guys. And then we've got these curvy pieces going on, presumably, like so. Oh, I do love it when it's all nice and flush and perfect. Um, conspiracy theory. Is this about the Sainsbury's flour? I think actually it was a common issue when um, the supermarkets were all running out of flowers. Um, I think there was basically, they just kind of were grabbing it from wherever they could because one of the bulk bags, like bags I bought, which was from a catering supplies company locally to me, theirs was off as well. But that was kind of a bigger issue because I saw posts from all over the country about that particular brand. So these things do happen, it's just whether they pick them up or not. And unfortunately, in the few batches of the Sainsbury's I bought at that time, it hadn't been corrected yet, which is why I jumped ship and went somewhere else. Um, Joseph has that same problem. What problem, Joseph? I've probably said about 50 things since then. Remind me. Um, purple. Purple. 
We're getting there. Purple, white, white. Oh, and the cake rises and collapses. Yeah, it, it could be the um the baking powder. Are there, there are many reasons why it can rise and collapse. It can be things like opening the oven too prematurely. Sometimes recipes tell you to rotate the cake, but if you haven't given the cake sufficient time for it to be mostly cooked, you shouldn't be opening the oven. Kind of as a rule, I won't open the oven within the first hour of baking. So if a recipe requires less than an hour, I'm not opening that oven. Um, over mixing your cake mix can add too much air to it, which again causes an amazing rise, but will eventually collapse because the cake mix can't support it. Um, but yes, lots and lots of different reasons. Yeah, Timo, as I explained earlier, Timo's in Germany and we did, um, we made scones together over a Zoom call a while ago and um, they don't have self-raising flour in Germany, so um, we we made our own and he's just saying that he was shocked by how much baking powder is in self-raising flour. Okay, this is where we are, that's our base done. So, we've built up that back wall, it's got those lovely, oh so aesthetically pleasing curved edges and then we've used those tiny little flat pieces to hide all of the protruding lumpy bits. What are they called? Somebody must know. Um, and then all we need to do now is assemble our figures. So hopefully I haven't dropped anything and we'll start at the back with the pink one. So we have a pink torso, pink legs, pink head, Oh, it's already on. Oh, literally had a panic then. So Vicky's just saying that when she moved into the house she lives in, the original oven would bake perfect cakes with any flour. When we had the kitchen updated, I found the cakes weren't baking correctly and can only use premium flour now. No idea why. That is strange. Okay, is there a particular pose to put them in? No, literally just hands at their sides. Okay, so there's character number one, and they are going over here. Messages pop up on that screen, and then they don't arrive on here till a little while later. So Timo's asking if I'm going to recreate this with sugar paste next week, and I said, um, uh, Vicky's saying she's already said that to me, and I said back, Timo, that I would do it if Vicky collaborates with me and she does the figures and I do the cake and then we put them together to finish it off. I think that would be an excellent idea. It could be a TikTok collaboration, Vicky. Again, for those of you who haven't been following it, Vicky and I have both joined TikTok recently and we challenged each other to post a video every single day throughout June because we both kind of had it but we weren't really doing anything with it. Um, or we were being quite sporadic with it and posting for a couple of days and then forgetting it existed again. So we are, yeah, we're posting every single day throughout June, which we've both stuck to so far. We're almost halfway. So if you are a TikTok user, do feel free to go and find us. We're both over there. Um, probably the easiest way to find us is if you search Mr. Baker's Cakes and then we also comment on each other's posts constantly as well. So if you find my latest post, you'll find a comment from Vicky there that you can then click through to her as well. Morning, Paul. It's actually strangely relaxing to do Lego, Paul. As I said, I'm a bit worried I'm gonna become addicted and this is gonna be my new thing. I haven't got room in my house for another hobby. Okay, we're four characters in, which I nearly dropped. I don't know if they're sharp on camera. Let's have a look, kind of. There we are. Okay, are you still awake? Goodness me. Apologies in advance to Kelly's children. She's going to be a nightmare tomorrow. Oh, I love this hair. See, if I actually had hair, this is the hair that I would have. Ridiculously over the top quiff. Um, green. 
I love that I just checked the guide to see what colour's next. Wow. I could, Timo. Are you paying for it? I'll get one of those hair systems that you constantly see on social media. Just for the lols. The ones that glue on and last like six months. Yellow. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'll put it on backwards for a second. Yeah. This one is giving me, have you seen um, American Horror Story Apocalypse? Um, the two characters who work at like the equivalent of Apple or Microsoft or what have you. Look at the hair on that one, if you can. Yeah, you can't see that at all. Never mind, I'll give you close-ups at the end. Um, orange. It's already attached, I panicked, I've lost the legs again. Fancy getting your head stapled. I don't know what that means. Um, no, as I say, if I was gonna, I'd want one of those ones where they literally like shave the, the monk um, style, where they just shave out the middle of your hair and then just glue it and then blend it into your real like side stubble. That would be the one. Just rock up to Cake International in November with a full head of hair. Yeah, I'm sure that would go down really well. Okay, red. We're almost there. I can't believe actually, I thought this was gonna take me hours. And which way around does the red hair go that way? That's also quite cool hair. It's very um kind of anime style, I like that one too. Before I started shaving my head, and my hair disappeared while I was shaving it, um, I used to be quite well known for ridiculously over-the-top hair. So that's why I always wear hats now. I need something going on up here. I can't just be plain. And last but not least, the final bit. Can we have some sort of like, oh, you're off to bed now, Kelly. Well done. Um, I feel like we need some sort of drum roll or a parade or something. So if you could all just do a drum roll wherever you are, just on your desk or something. And last but not least, there we go. I can see if I've popped the pink off now. Oh dear, I might be too clumsy for that guy. Okay, so here we go. So that is what it looks like. We've got our 11 stripes representing all of the different colors of the Progress Pride flag. And then we've got one character for each of those colors as well. I have to say, really love this. When I saw it online, I just thought it looked absolutely amazing. And I'm gonna keep it in here in the studio and find somewhere to put it, maybe up on the shelf up there. Um, just so that if people stumble across my channel in the future, they'll know that it's a safe space for anyone who wants to, you know, they, they know that they can, they can watch my content, enjoy my content, and they are welcome here. Um, and I think actually that's another thing that I think is brilliant about this kit, because of course it is designed to be displayed. And I've seen so many people on all social media platforms posting that they've got it and that they're building it as a family or just building it themselves. And they're going to display it in their home. And again, if you go into someone's home, if you've got a job, for example, where you go into people's homes, it can be, um, you know, it can be quite unnerving if you are someone who is from, a, you know, a more, mar it's, I don't know if this is the right words, but marginalised uh, segment of society and knowing that you're welcome in that home just by seeing something as simple as a Lego model on the shelf is going to be so reassuring and I absolutely love it. But anyway, so that was the new Everyone is Awesome Lego set from Lego, obviously, designed by Matthew Ashton, um, which we have built in about just over 45 minutes. So if you would like to get your hands on one of these, um, head to my video description. There is a link there which will take you directly to the page on the Lego website where you can pick one up. Um, and of course, when you've made it 
do make sure that you tag me on social media so that I can see it as well. Um, next week we will be back to our normal posting schedule, so I have two more Pride themed videos planned for uh, June, one of which will be a tutorial to make the model that should have gone up this week, um, although as I say I'm really pleased I got to do this instead, and um, one of which will be a, I don't know if you can call it a tutorial, but this week I was very lucky to, um, to be sent the new Edible Artist Oil Paints um, by Karen Portaleo with Sugar In. Um, these are supposed to be absolutely groundbreaking paints for use with food because they are oil based and they, perf they perform like oil paints. Of course, most of the time when we're painting on cakes, we're using powdered colours diluted into either water or alcohol if we want to do more of a watercolour style painting or into um, melted cocoa butter if we want to do oil based painting. So to have a paint that is already that is ready to use and you don't have to keep it sat over a heat like you do with cocoa butter um, is, is groundbreaking, new and exciting and still 100% vegan by the way. And then, whoops, I was also sent the new paintbrush set from Emily Hankins who many of you will know is basically the, the queen of painting on cakes. So I, I think the universe is trying to tell me something by sending me paint and paint brushes. So one of the videos I'm going to do during Pride Month is going to be a portrait of a member of our LGBTQIA community, but I'm not going to give away any spoilers in advance. So next week is a, a cake topper model, the week after we'll be painting that portrait. So that's what you've got to look forward to. If it is your first time here on the Mr Baker's Cakes YouTube channel, please first of all make sure you hit that big red subscribe button because um, I'd be thrilled to have you here to watch all of my future videos. Um, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below. And of course, there is also the bell icon if you would like to receive a push notification every time I upload a new video. Um, if you know anyone who would enjoy watching this video, feel free to share it over on social media. I would very much appreciate it. And other than that, all that remains is for me to thank you all for being here and keeping me company this sunny Sunday morning. And I will see you guys at the same time next week, 10 o'clock, for my next video. Until then, stay safe, take care, and as always, happy baking. Bye, guys. So now I have to come over and turn the camera off over there. Give me a second. Okay, bye!